How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a WWE Headlines episode number six, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can also follow Corporate Cappy at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. You're, we are also be able to follow on Instagram at No Holds Barred. WP, all one word. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. And any video version such as this one will be available on YouTube. YouTube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, the host of WB Headlines. And guys, we are live right here on Spreaker. Spreaker is a fantastic fantastic podcast app you can see if you're watching the video version of this podcast you can see the graphic on the screen there Spreaker chat with us live right here on the air all you have to do is go to the app store download Spreaker podcast radio app create a free account which takes about I don't know maybe like 30 seconds of your life and then add the podcast it is available on all Android and Apple devices as you see there on the screen so guys go get that it's a fantastic app I highly suggest you go and get it or you know if you if you're more comfortable going to the website and doing it, you know, you do what you got to do. But uh, great, great podcast app. And that's where you can chat with us live on the air. Like these people right now in the chat, Keep it Girl 125 happy Rusev Day from Little Miss Tricks. Happy Rusev Day to all of you out there as well. We also got Glorious Greg. What's up, Kyle? What's going on, Glorious Greg? Our 2017 Fan of the Year. And guys, you know what that means? He gets his own theme song played before every one of his tweets uh, on the Lowdown Show, which is going to... Uh, Kind of re-debut the week after this week. We're going to do a, a NXT 2018 preview. I'm going to get the poster out to you guys tomorrow. It's a great poster I've made. So make sure you tune into that this week. And then the Lowdown Show will go back on track the week after where you can have your tweets read on the air about NXT. And Glorious Greg will have his own theme song before every one of his tweets throughout the rest of the year. And a shout-out on every single show. Um, what's going on, guys, in the chat? Welcome to Headlines, guys. I haven't had an episode like this in a long, long time. Um, it's just been a really busy month, December, and really uh, crappy times to get the headlines out. But I got some, got some new thing. I got about 12, 12 headlines for you guys today uh, to talk about. You guys probably already know about them, but I want to give you guys my opinion, and I want to know your opinion out there. All you have to do is tweet at us or let us know uh, anything I talk about on the air. Um, yeah, it's been a while since we had WWE headlines. So as I said before, this week is uh, the Lone Show is a special edition, is a 2018 preview of NXT. We're going to talk about who we think are going to be the breakout stars, who we think are going to be NXT champion throughout 2018. Uh, maybe the next uh, round of uh, independent wrestlers that are probably going to get signed with NXT, who we think is going to come on over. And will we see anything big happen in NXT throughout the year of 2018? So you don't want to miss that preview out this Wednesday uh, night, I believe at 7 or 8 p.m. I've listed it on our Twitter account. Um, but besides that, guys, you know what? Might as well uh, get it playing, too. I haven't played this uh, theme in a long time, but uh, let's get right into the news. So hit the headline music. That's right. That sound can only mean one thing. We got news. And if you guys in the chat, and if you guys also want to join the chat in future podcasts, you want to let me know about some news that I don't read on the podcast or you want me to talk about, let me know. And I'll read them out while we are chatting on the air. So I'll get to the first bit of news um, we got this week. And it's how Darby thanked their wrestlers for working on Christmas Day this week. So Darby treated the wrestlers nice. They, they knew they had to work on the holidays, get away from their families and all that. So they treated him nice after this, and I'm uh, after that, and I'm gonna let you guys know exactly what happened. So on Monday Night Raw took place on Christmas Day this year. As we all know, a heavy topic leading into the show was whether or not Derby should have aired the show live. In the past, the company would have taped it beforehand when it landed on the day on a day like Christmas, uh, so employees could spend time with their families. Now I'm one of those people who think they should have done that. Uh, you guys have your opinions out there. I really think they shouldn't have worked Christmas Day, and they should have done a taped episode earlier in the day. Uh, like they do when they go to the UK. Um, so you know, it's just my opinion. You guys have yours out there, but that's why I should think I think that they should have done. Um, it turns out that Derby did something for the wrestlers for being away from their families on Christmas. Mike Johnson of PW Insider reports that Derby threw a Christmas party for all of the rosters on Monday night or Monday night after Raw. 
Also, Johnson says that they picked up all the hotel bills for both Raw and SmackDown's rosters in Chicago as a thank you for being away from their families over the holidays. Uh, if you don't know, Derby stars are responsible for uh, hotel and travel expenses with most cases. So that's actually pretty nice of them to pick up everyone's hotel and uh, um, hotel bills for both Raw and SmackDown. I would have just racked up the room service that night. If I knew beforehand... Like if I if I had like an inside, I would just racked up the the room service. But then you know, what if they didn't? <laughs> that would have sucked. Uh, also, Johnson says that they're to be picked up. Okay, no, I read that. As noted, uh, the show ended up doing 2.703 million viewers. That was only a three percent down from last week's show airing on Christmas. Didn't end up hurting viewership too much. Um, I actually thought it was going to be less than that. I thought they, they were going to do very, very poorly, maybe like the 1.8, 1.7 mark, but they ended up doing all right on Christmas Day. Not sure why I didn't watch really raw. I was in and out on Christmas Day. Um, but, yeah, it is what it is. You know, I have my opinion. I don't think the wrestlers should have been working on Christmas at all. Maybe done a tape show earlier in the day and then have to go uh, – have time to go and spend it with their families afterwards, but it was nice of Derby to pick up their hotel bills and treat them to a Christmas party after Raw. So I guess you could say good on Derby, but you know what? Next time, Derby, just just tape the shows. You don't need to do a live. There were horrendous episodes this week anyways. No one enjoyed it. Let's just tape it next time. That way we can choose not to watch it and just read the spoilers. <laughs> uh, Tiffany is joining in the chat. She is from That Ass Podcast where I got to co-host this week on Dadass Podcast, guys, go check it out on their channel, uh, Dadass Podcast. Subscribe to them, hit that bell icon for all updates for them as well. You can go check out this week's episode where myself included was on the co-host edition. So go check it out, guys. Great, great stuff. And if you're into that sort of relationship kind of stuff, pod and looking for a podcast about that, these guys know their stuff. Go check them out, please. Um, what is going on, Tiffany? Um, yes, it was it was nice that we give. Uh, credit to their their superstars for help, or, uh, helping giving their superstars a christmas party as a thank you so good for wwe um <laughs> yes uh if you guys want to go watch the episode where i was on das podcast i kind of got tiffany drunk we played a drinking game sort of while we were uh recording that podcast every time i would have to every time i would say that ass she would have to take a drink of champagne and i had to drink uh, a sip of my drink as well so um it was definitely a good time you guys don't want don't want to miss that go check it out it's live on their channel right now um let's get into more news more news more news uh, speculation on how Roman Reigns will lose the IC Championship. This could contain spoilers, so if you don't want to hear this, please just tune out for a couple minutes and then come back in. Uh, speculation on how Roman Reigns will lose the IC title. There have been rumors the past year that suggest Roman Reigns will be facing off against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 34 for the WWE Universal Championship. Yes, the match that's been uh, obviously booked since last before last WrestleMania, so... Uh, based on the booking of Brock over the past year, it looks like this is still the plan moving forward. With that in mind, Roman is still the WWE Intercontinental Champion. Uh, there have been some fans suggesting that it could be a title versus title match, similar to what they did at WrestleMania 6 with Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. Just like I said, I knew that they're probably going to do. I wouldn't doubt if they went in this direction. WWE is so high on getting this the push so bad. It, but you know, you know what? The fans are going to shit all over it. I don't know what WWE thinks that they're going to get a really good response out of this. It's going to be shit on. Um, I don't think that WWE will go on this route. I think Roman Reigns will drop the title belt beforehand. So how will Reigns lose the title? Um, this is a uh, a journalist's opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, one, The Miz costs Reigns the title on Raw this Monday. Reigns is defending his title in a no disqualification match against Samoa Joe. The Miz could interfere and cost Reigns the championship. This would put the belt on Joe without having Reigns lose clean. That is a really good idea. I'd love to see that because Miz and Reigns have some unfinished business to take care of. The Miz is off filming a television, uh, or sorry, uh, film the movie The Marine Six Close Quarters. So they could probably bring him back just for this Raw to interfere on Reigns and, and it cost him the championship. Another thing that this guy puts down, he puts the Miz ends up getting involved in the Joe and Reigns feud. This leads to a triple threat match at the Royal Rumble Reigns versus Joe versus Miz. 
at the Rumble. Either Joe pins the Miz or vice versa. This allows WWE to take the belt off Roman without getting pinned. Both are really good ideas because they're so high on Roman Reigns not looking weak in this case. And then they, if they want him to go into WrestleMania looking strong against Brock Lesnar, this would be the two main ways to go in this scenario. Um, to me, I like the scenario number one where Miz costs Roman Reigns um, uh, this Monday on Raw and, and gets Joe to... Uh, uh, win the championship, but I do also like the other version because then we know that Roman Reigns probably won't be in the Royal Rumble, but we know what happened last year as he was already in a match and he ended up being number 30 in the Royal Rumble, so that can't we can't be really saved from that. So I would go with direction number one and have uh, Roman Reigns get screwed over by The Miz this Monday night on Raw and have Joe win the IC championship, a well-deserved title because Joe needs a championship right now. He is riding a wave of momentum that is just going way over the top and he needs a championship bad sorry that was my cell phone i gotta make sure i turn that on vibrate um it's just it's it's nuts it, exactly what glory is great how many more marine moves they're gonna do marine watch glory is great like f- three or four years from now it's gonna be like marine 15 it's gonna be with another new up-and-coming star you know it's it's just, it's just gonna keep going i guarantee you that's one of those movies that's just gonna keep going and dutter is gonna make this big deal about the like, marines the longest reigning uh movie series in history or some bullshit like that um Tiffany, I think you haven't watched any of those movies. Just watch the first one with John Cena. That's all you want to watch. That's the only one I actually have personally watched is the first one with John Cena. I didn't watch any other ones because I don't know why. I just didn't feel like it because the one, number one was okay. It wasn't the greatest, but it still was probably better than all the rest. I don't know. I haven't seen any of them. I guess I got to wait. Uh, um, but, yeah, I think the direction that uh, the Miz or the, the way that Roman Reigns should lose the title clean or uh, – sorry – Clean enough that he doesn't look weak is the way of interfering on Reigns and Joe this Monday on Raw. Uh, Cupid Girl puts in the chat, I would just let Joe win the title on Raw clean. I love the Miz, but I can't see him in this feud with Joe and Reigns. I only see him because it, it's true what they said. They have unfinished business, Miz and Reigns, before Miz took off. So that would be the only case. And then we can see a mini a mini feud with Miz and Reigns that could end up at the Royal Rumble. Who knows? Or maybe they even do the way they do on this Monday, like Samoa Joe wins the title. But, you know, there's that WWE rematch clause that we always sometimes forget about or some people want to forget about because it it's terrible. But then uh, Reigns invokes that rematch clause at Royal Rumble, and it ends up being still a triple threat match for that Intercontinental Championship. And they still kind of have a, you know, I'd say Samoa Joe comes out clean in that case at Royal Rumble. So I think it's a good way to get the title off him if they choose that route, or it may be in the back of their minds. They're still going the route where it's going to be title for title at WrestleMania, and that's just going to be horrendous if they go in that direction. So... We'll see what happens uh, in the upcoming weeks. Looks like it'll become much clearer, actually, this Monday, tomorrow night, on Monday Night Raw, which is going to be very, very, very rough for me because I plan on going... I'm going to a New Year's party tonight, and it's going to be uh, extremely lit there tonight, so I don't know how I'm going to be tomorrow. I probably won't be tweeting at all for Raw Live. We'll see how I feel, but it's going to be a rough day for me tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. and in, in, in saying that, guys, I hope all of you out there have a safe and happy new year tonight. And please be safe. And it's really, really cold out here where I am. It's really cold out there where you guys are. Please dress accordingly. Because right now, this morning, my car said it was uh, almost felt like minus 25. So that's pretty bad. That's, if it's, that's Celsius, the Canadians. Not sure what that is to Fahrenheit to you Americans out there. But do the conversion. It's cold outside. <laughs> um, let's get some more news, shall we? Rumor killer on the John Cena versus Undertaker poster going around. And if you guys are watching this on the YouTube version of this uh, episode, I'm going to quickly transition it for you guys right now on the screen. There is the rumored poster that is going around for the uh, WrestleMania this year of Undertaker and John Cena. Whoever made this is a unbelievably like genius like this is so well done you got the honor you got the WrestleMania logo faded in the background you got Undertaker with his glowing eyes you have John Cena in a hood you got the one last ride catchphrase right underneath which is very clever and then you got WrestleMania April 8th you got the date the place um this is a really really well done poster in order to tease this it looks like they might be going that direction so uh let's get right into that article um, this week, it was reported that there are p- big, big plans for John Cena to be involved in a major match at WrestleMania 34. This is rumored to be against a major lane like The Undertaker, Goldberg, I highly doubt, and Batista, I really highly doubt. I know he wants to come back, but I highly doubt that they're going to do something like that because Batista and Cena, no, that's not a major match. Um, 
There were uh, there was a poster making the rounds, as I just showed you guys, on the internet that featured John Cena and The Undertaker. This got fans excited that the match would be happening. While the poster is really cool, it isn't official. The poster was actually made by a Reddit user, which was shared in January of 2017, so earlier this year. Excuse me. In the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave Meltzer noted, this Dave Meltzer, so take it a grain of salt, noted that uh, he was told rumors of John Cena and AJ Styles match at WrestleMania 34 and that are, they are incorrect. So thank God. I'm like, they don't, these guys don't need to face each other again. They've proved to all of us what they can do in the ring and they have nothing else to prove to us. They have nothing else to show us. They had one of the matches of the year last year at Royal Rumble. They got these guys, and it was for the WWE titles. So these guys don't need to face each other at Mania. That's stupid. So according to Meltzer, Cena is expected to be in a much bigger match, although it is unknown who will be against for it to be a bigger than a championship match with Styles. It most likely will be versus a non-regular performer such as The Undertaker. Now it says, or Hulk Hogan, but I Hulk Hogan's not coming back. Let's be real here. Um, after mentioning Hogan, Meltzer uh, stated that would be most uh, un- or most likely be a long shot because of his bad back issues. Well, duh. Uh, Meltzer concluded that by saying that he expects the top of the WrestleMania card to be set on the Raw 25th anniversary special since it is most likely the most watched Raw of the year. We'll see about that. And I still got my my my, my skeptics of uh, this Raw 25 because I don't know what the hell is going down. There's two Raws going on the same night that week. I don't know what the hell they have planned. We'll have to see what happens. But they're calling it to be the most watched Raw. Um, but if the rumors keep leaking out like this, people are probably more going to chew into it because they want to see they show down between Cena and Undertaker, which they probably, I know they should have done years and years ago. This match should have been done at WrestleMania 30. That should have been the, how the streak ended with Cena and Undertaker would have made that much more of a better match than the shitty, lazy match with Brock Lesnar and then concussing Undertaker. And Undertaker just looked like shit that year. So it should have been done years ago and they didn't. But the fact that they're doing it now and it's a match I've been wanting to see for years and years now, I'm actually happy that it might come to fruition. But we'll see what happened. Um, yeah, the poster looks sick. Uh, yeah, it is time for Nakamura and AJ. I really hope that happens. It kind of looks like they are going in that direction. I got some news about that later on the show too. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll see what happens, man. I I don't know what's going on with, uh, this Undertaker and a John Cena thing. We don't know what the Undertaker is like. We don't know if these are just rumors and it's actually not going to happen. Maybe there's a bigger match that we don't know about that Cena is going to have. Um, because we know about uh, that. They did that whole farewell thing with Undertaker last year. So like that really like caught me. So I don't think that I I don't know if, how I'd feel about another Undertaker match. That's what I mean. They shouldn't have done something like that. But again, you can also play in fact that Taker. This is before the double hip surgery he just had. Maybe he's better now with this hip surgery. Maybe there's he's actually found out there's a chance of him to wrestle maybe one more match. And I know he's been wanting to face John Cena for a while now too. Um, and then there's also rumors coming out that uh, Undertaker actually wants to face Braun Strowman. That would be the worst idea imaginable. Undertaker and Braun Strowman at WrestleMania this year. Um, Taker, do you want to go for another hip surgery? Like that would just be terrible. We saw how bad the match was with Reigns. It just I feel much better if it was John Cena. So uh, yes, we'll see what happens, and we'll see what happens for Raw uh, 25. You almost bought tickets for Raw 25, uh, Tiffany. Oh boy. Um, I don't know how that would have been. <laughs> I hope you would have went to the Barclay Center, not the, the other one, because I don't know how the other one's going to be. We'll see what happens. Uh, but this would, if they want, again, what Cuba Girl just said uh, in the chat, this would be a perfect time to start the build up right now. At Raw twenty five, you need a a couple month build with these two to be an epic match and for it to be one of those epic matches. But again, it's not going to be in the main event, even though it should be. Undertaker John Cena should be a main event at WrestleMania. It shouldn't be this bullshit of co main event because you can't follow that. So. We'll see what happens. Uh, it's not going to be Hulk Hogan, Cuba Girl. He's his back is done. Like there's no, I don't think Hulk Hogan is ever wrestling ever again. He might make his appearances, but wrestling is not happening. So, in saying that, let's get into some more news. And I got some news about our boy Ty Dillinger from our hometown. A potential heel turn at a WWE live event. WWE ran a live event in, De- in Detroit, Michigan, on Wednesday night this week. During the event, there was a heel turn teased by Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger and Sin Cara were in a ring together, and Dillinger extended his hand for a handshake. Dillinger then hit Sin Cara with a cheap shot after he shook his hand. Interesting that this happened at a live event. Could this be a hint that Dillinger is testing out the full-blown heel turn soon? He hasn't been used much on SmackDown Live over the past several months. Well, duh. He should have been, but now maybe they're testing out this heel turn. Maybe they finally seen the tapes that I've been saying for weeks on this show. 
of Ty Dillinger being a heel. If you guys don't know, go back to like 2014 or 2015. I don't remember what year it was, but when Dillinger was still in the live events of NXT, wasn't really on TV, but he was the heel and he would open the show. Probably one of the best heel promos you'll ever hear. And I hope they bring that into WWE television on SmackDown if this is a full-on heel turn. And I saw some more news that he did it again at another live event and telling the fans not to chant the 10 chant. So maybe this is a full-on heel turn. Now, with the 10 chant thing, I don't think he should be doing that because remember when I remember when he was heel in NXT, he didn't tell the fans to stop the 10 chant. Uh, he let that happen, but when he got in the ring, um, he opened up the line. He's like, get out your cameras. The rumors are true. You're looking at a perfect 10. And then like the crowd would chant 10, and he would make fun of the crowd, and the, tr- the crowd would chant 1-1-1. One, one, one. It was great. They should keep that exact type of promo with his character now on SmackDown. Do not change it. Do not tell him to stop at the Chen chants. Um, but we'll see. I'm, I'm glad that they're trying something new with Dillinger, maybe to get him more on TV. A heel turn looks like it is a great way to do uh, Ty Dillinger. Um, I've seen his heel work, and I love it. So if it means more Dillinger on TV, I am all for it. Um uh, Cupid Girl says, I heard Ty Dillinger yesterday at a live event told the fans he had to stop chaining the 10. So I hope they don't do that. I hope they stop doing that. I hope they just, they're just they doing that as a test run because they, he never did that in NXT as a uh, uh, a heel, uh, as Ty Dillinger as a heel. He only did it as uh, last night's live event. So I hope they're just testing it out and they really don't do it because it really took away from his heel character if they're going to go this route. So um, Next bit of news, the original location for WrestleMania 34. Yes, there was an original location for this year. We're only a few months away from WrestleMania 34. The event will take place in New Orleans, Louisiana, where myself and Corporate Cappy are going this year and making the long road trip down to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome for that whole week. That will be previously held at WrestleMania 30 in the same building. It turns out that New Orleans wasn't the original plan for the WrestleMania 34 location. According to Mike Johnson of the PW Insider, the original location for WrestleMania 34 was going to be MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Wow. According to Johnson, New Orleans swapped or swooped in at the last moment with great presentation for WrestleMania to be held as a special event during the city's tricentennial celebration. Ooh, so that's going to be a big party down there when we're going down there. Uh, Johnson thinks that this could give New Jersey and New York area a leg up when it comes to WrestleMania 35, but they have, haven't heard anything specific yet. So, we will see what happens. But yes, this year was supposed to be back at MetLife Stadium. That would have helped us <laughs> with the drive, I think, a little bit. Um, but Because you know, we are driving from here in Niagara Falls all the way down to New Orleans. But uh, yeah, um, maybe we're going to get it for WrestleMania 35 next year. Um, that would be awesome. I really wish it was this year because that would help a little bit. But we'll see what happens. But yeah, this year was supposed to be at MetLife. But we had... Uh, New Orleans swoop in right the last second with that tricentennial celebration presentation and win at WrestleMania 34. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Let's go with the next bit of news. Details on the injury of Paige at a WWE live event. Okay, so if you guys, you probably probably already have heard out there. If you haven't, Paige was recently uh, injured at a live event in uh, Uniondale, New York. On a Wednesday night, our girl Tiff in the chat was there live to witness this account. And she was in a six-woman tag team match. Paige, Sonya Deville, and Mandy Rose Absolution versus Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Mickey James. Um, basically, the incident, uh, she was kicked in the back neck area. And uh, and she went down. And they really had, they had, to, they had to attend to her. And they actually called the match off. Uh, Mick Foley provided a positive update on Twitter, which was good news. We now have more details on what happened. According to Mike Johnson of the PW Insider, Paige suffered a stinger after being kicked from behind by Sasha Banks. The six-woman tag team match was declared a no contest. The original plan was for Paige's team to pick up the win. Uh, Dave Meltzer in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter says that there was a stretcher brought out for her, but she left the ring under her own power, which is a good sign. Um, she was able to walk to the back in a, with a little bit of help. Meltzer also says Paige was at the hotel bar feeling better after the show, which is fantastic news. Paige is doing great. But uh, PW Insider has a new update that Paige has been pulled from all the remainder of the live events this week and this upcoming weekend, which is good. You want her to get healed uh, a little bit more. Um, you don't want her to suffer another stinger. So uh, it sucks. It was It's one of those uh, uh, 
shitty cases. Like, it happens in wrestling. A lot of people were shitting on Sasha Banks, and a lot of people were shitting on Paige for this. It happens. It's one of those spots, guys. It, wrestling is never going to be perfect, okay, as much as we want it to be or we think it should be. Shit like this happens. She got a stinger. She got hurt. And she just came back from a year and a half long injury, so it would maybe it was best that they ended the match like that and they took precautions and took her away from all the live events and letting her heal up. But the fact that she is okay, we had a big good, good update from McFoley. She was seen at the bar uh, doing better, so this is all good signs that Paige is okay and it was just a stinger. So we will see what happens um, coming on Raw if she will get physical or not. I hope that she doesn't. I hope she just remains not physical until WrestleMania and save her from any more injury. Um, let's get into some more news here. And speculation on the WWE title match at the Royal Rumble. Things have been very interesting regarding the WWE title picture at the Royal Rumble. Kevin Owens defeated AJ Styles on SmackDown Live this week in a non-title match. AJ had the match won, but the referee was distracted by Shane McMahon. This led to Owens picking up the win with a roll-up. So what does this mean for the WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble? Let's speculate, shall we? Based on the ending of SmackDown Live, what I think is going to happen is this fatal four-way, or is a fatal four-way for the title. So this is the author's uh, rendition of what he thinks is going to happen. Before that, I'm going to take a sip of water. Ah, oh, God, it's tough doing this on my own. <laughs> uh, Owens now has a pinfall victory over Styles which gives him a claim at a WWE title match. We've already seen Owens versus Styles multiple times this year, so I don't think this will be this will be getting a singles match for the title. I think that it is likely that Sami Zayn also gets added to the match, which we now know that Sami Zayn will be taking on AJ Styles one on one this week, and he's probably going to win again, and it's probably going to be dirty. Uh, Styles will likely be feuding with Owens and Zayn over the next few weeks, and Zayn will find his way to get included. Um, this is the author's scenario. Shane McMahon decides to add himself to the match, making it a fatal four-way. AJ Styles, Zayn Owens, and Shane McMahon for the WWE title. Uh, here are his reasons. Shane would add himself in to help even the odds against Sammy and Kevin. If it was a triple threat, the odds would have se severely stacked against Styles. Shane already wants to get his hands on Sammy and Kevin, so it would make sense for him to add himself to the match. Um, there was a bit of tension between Styles and Shane based on how SmackDown Live ended this week, if you guys all saw the stare down. Um, this would also continue on tension between Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Shane adding himself to a world title match could spark more conflict between the two uh, since SmackDown isn't supposed to be about them. I really like that idea. So I like this guy's or this author's take on how it should go down. I hope we see something like that, or it might just end up being a triple threat match, but... Um, and if it does, maybe this will be the deception between Owens and Zayn. Maybe we'll finally get the separate of these two. Or maybe they'll go into the direction. I like the direction of Shane being added to the match. And it creates more conflict with Daniel Bryan. It finally gets uh, his hands on Owens and Zayn in an actual match. So, yes, I hope Daniel Bryan returns to the ring sometime uh, this year too. Uh, glorious great. That'd be great to see. Uh, the Rumble is, I think, the third Sunday of January, I believe. Uh, no, it's the 28th. So... The last Sunday of uh, January. Um, but yeah, uh, I really ho I hope they go in the direction of the Fatal 4-Way match. I really like that idea. So I love this author's take on it. I'm going to agree with that and go with that direction. Hope they go with that direction. It kind of looks like they're going that way so far. They got Zayn versus AJ Styles 101 this coming uh, Tuesday on SmackDown, which will probably have some sort of interference helping Zayn win. And then them two claiming that they both deserve a WWE title shot. And then Shane adding himself to the match. Uh, as well, so I really hope that happens and we see that at the Royal Rumble. I think that could be a really good Fatal 4-Way match. Um, next bit of news, and it's not news, but this is some pretty funny shit here. <laughs> um, you, I, I can't believe I, I, I seen this and I'm like, okay, I really have to see it and I was dying. I read this to Corporate Cappy. He was losing his mind, but uh, it was an article release. The top 10 most disliked videos of 2017 on Derby YouTube's page. So I'll start from uh, the least dislikes to the most dislikes for you guys. This is Sit back and listen. This is entertaining. Um, here, let me fix this up here. Okay. So the at number 10, we have The Great Kali Returns at uh, <laughs> Battleground to assist Jinder Mahal in a Punjabi prison match. This received 8,000 dislikes on the page. 
Uh, also with 8,000 dislikes, coming in at number nine, Goldberg is at a loss for words after his historic night at Fastlane. 8,000 dislikes. You Won't Want to Miss Emily's Premiere comes in at number seven, the promo. It has 11,000 dislikes and only 1,000 likes. Yes. <laughs> Uh, coming at number six, John Cena vs. Jinder Mahal on SmackDown August 5th compiled 11,000 dislikes. Hmm. Uh, coming at number five, Emelina finally premieres on Raw February 13th. It received 15,000 dislikes and only 8,000 likes. Uh, number four, we have... Uh, or sorry, no, that was okay. That was number six. Oh, I, I'm sorry, guys. I, I kind of screwed up there. Uh, Emelina can't wait to reward your patience. Has 15,000 dislikes and only 2,000 likes. Jesus. Man, the Amelina promos were really like hated on on Dirty's YouTube page. Uh, coming in at number four, Undertaker makes perhaps his final WrestleMania entrance at WrestleMania 33. This compiled uh, 17,000 dislikes. Um, coming in at number three, Kevin Owens versus Goldberg for the Universal Championship at Fastlane. A horrendous match received 19,000 dislikes. Jesus. Coming in at number two, Braun Strowman savagely attacks Roman Reigns, the one where he threw him off the dock with the stretcher. Uh, that received 23,000 dislikes. This is the funny part. It received 124,000 likes. <laughs> Jesus. And the number one most disliked video on Darby's YouTube page. Oh my god, I was dying when I read this to Cappy. Roman Reigns declares him declares the dare to be his yard now on the Raw after WrestleMania received a total of 35,000 dislikes. Yes, 35,000 dislikes. And only 20,000 likes. Unbelievable. I I was dying when I first read that to Cappy. It might have been just like we were really tired and we were laughing at anything, but my lord, I cannot believe that is the funniest thing I've ever read. But the the, the, the one where Strowman destroying Reigns, had, the fact that it has 124,000 likes <laughs> over 28,000 dislikes. That is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Um, yeah, I'm not finished with you. Uh, it just it just for you, uh, Glaze Gray. I'll play one of these for you. Yeah, just for you. <laughs> um, let's get into some more news, shall we? And the success. Of the glorious Rusev Day. Yes, this is how successful Rusev Day is. I got some news about this, guys. Uh, Rusev Day has become a hit over the past several weeks on WWE television. Rusev and Aiden English have been spreading Rusev Day cheer, and it has caught on like wildfire with fans. The duo has been receiving some of the loudest reactions on SmackDown Live over the past few weeks. Um, duh. It turns out that Rusev Day t-shirt has been a major success so far. Here's how. The shirt has been the best-selling item on the WWE shop for the past several days. Not only is it the best-selling t-shirt, it is the best-selling item in the entire shop. Out of everything on that shop, it is the best-selling item. It has also been sold out for the past several days, and if you try to order it right now, it won't be in stock until after January 1st of this year. So here are top five sellers at the moment. Number one, Rusev Day. Number two, Finn Balor's Balor Club forever. Forever. Over. <laughs> uh, the Shield Shield Reunited t-shirt. Pages of Scream is back. And the Usos down since day one-ish. is still at number five for most selling t-shirts on the shop. But my God, Rusev Day's t-shirt is the leading thing out of anything on the shop right now. That is incredible. But yeah, we can't. We don't want to push Rusev. No, no, we don't want to win, make him win with a double alkylate on SmackDown. No, no, we don't want to put him in the U.S. title tournament. We want to put Aiden English in the U.S. title tournament, which I have news about that soon. Um, no, no, no. He's selling the most T-shirts. We shouldn't push Rusev Day. Why do they hate this? I don't understand. It's it's finally getting over. I know he's supposed to be a bad guy, but it's something that's over. You know what it is? It's it's not what Darby wants over. They don't want the fans making something over. They want whatever they want over. <clears throat> Roman Reigns, <clears throat> Jenner Mahal. Unbelievable. More sales than Ellsworth's shirt, yes. Damn. That's incredible. The Rusev Day thing is popping. They really need 
to get this thing pushed because it is it needs to ride this wave and get better and better because Rusev is doing absolutely nothing besides this on SmackDown. He's basically rotting away. So I'm glad they're doing something with Rusev. I'm glad there's, there's signs point that Rusev deserves a push, and I hope they do something with him going into 2018. Um, speaking of the U.S. title, as I just mentioned, I got some rumors on a potential ladder match for the U.S. title. Yes. If you guys don't know, as I just said about the bracket, I'm going to show you if you're watching the YouTube version. Sorry if you guys are listening on Spreaker, iTunes, or Stitcher. Um, here is the bracket for the U.S. title tournament. So we know Bobby Roode won. He beat Baron Corbin. We know Jinder beat Ty Dillinger. But look at the other two matches. You got Zack Ryder versus Mojo Rawley. Okay, we know they're not going to win the U.S. title. Then Xavier Woods versus Aiden English. That is horrible. What the fuck? Why wasn't Rusev added to this? Rusev versus Xavier. I hope they, they do something and they actually add Rusev in instead of Aiden English. And it's Rusev against Xavier Woods. It ends up being Rusev against Jinder Mahal. Because that would make more sense. But again, like Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh, did you really think one of those guys are going to beat Bobby Roode? This is the most predictable fucking tournament I've ever seen. We know it's going to be Jinder and Bobby Roode in the finals. Let's be real here. This is terrible. This might be the poorly, most poorly done tournament I have ever seen in my entire life. My God, is that bad. Anyways, I got some news about our ladder match. Dolph Ziggler vacated the U.S. Championship a few weeks ago on SmackDown Live. Dana Bryan announced the tournament will be determined. A new champion. Bobby Roode and Jinder Mahal both won their first matches on SmackDown this week. There's still two more weeks. Or sorry, two more matches to determine the semifinals. As we speculated after Dolph left the title in the ring, it looks like Darby could be mimicking an old storyline of the past. We did suggest, or sorry, we suggested that this is a mirror of the storyline that Darby did with CM Punk in the Darby title back in 2001, or sorry, 2011. The Twitter account at Wrestling Vote suggests that it could be mirroring another storyline from the past. For those curious, the at Wrestling Vote's account has been credited for breaking the story of Neville walking out of Darby. Um, they suggested that it could lead to a ladder match similar to what happened at WrestleMania 10. For those that forgot, both Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon faced off in a ladder match after both claiming that they were the true intercontinental champion. The account suggests that Ziggler's storyline could be leading to a ladder match between him and whoever wins the U.S. title tournament, which is likely to be Bobby Roode if they went in this case. Um, it would make sense if... As a report suggests that Ziggler is still working live events for WWE, but is being kept off television. So this ladder match is a rumor, so take it with a grain of salt. But I will gladly like to see that if they're going that direction. I think that makes perfect sense. Or if they don't go into a ladder match, they go in that direction. You have Bobby Roode win the U.S. Championship. Then you have Dolph Ziggler come out, sort of like CM Punk did. And they claim, they're both claiming to be the U.S. Champion. Maybe you have two titles. And then um, you have a ladder match or some sort of match to determine who the undisputed United States champion is. Um, I like the ladder match scenario. I hope they mimic that of WrestleMania 10. I think they have a really good storyline with that. And I think I would love to see a Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler ladder match. That would be really, really sweet to see. Um, so this was this author's take on it. I take it with a grain of salt, guys. It's not confirmed that this is going to be a ladder match. It's just a rumor. So uh, I would love to see it happen, though. I love this rumor. So if they go in that direction, I think Bobby Roode and, Dol and, and Dolph Ziggler can have a really, really good feud for that U.S. or that U.S. title into a ladder match. I hope it happens at the Royal Rumble. I hope we get the conclusion of it of the Royal Rumble, or maybe it leads to at WrestleMania. Um, it just makes sense if they would mirror, mirror or mirror that, and they kind of you know they do like a backstory on it, and they do do stuff like that. I think it just it makes more sense to do it at WrestleMania actually than Royal Rumble. I'm gonna take that back. <laughs> um, but uh, I hope this actually leads to that. And if if it's any uh, if there's anything on this case right now, this Twitter account did break the story of Neville walking out of WWE, and they are right about it. So maybe they maybe they're right about this thing. We'll see what happens. Um, so I got some news here on the Raw Rumble winner and how it'll affect Fastlane. We noted earlier this week that the Nationwide Arena advertised. You guys don't know the Nationwide Arena advertised a fatal five-way match for the WWE Championship at the Fastlane pay-per-view on March 11th. Clearly, that's the current plan, but if they need to swap someone out of the match, i.e. the winner of the Royal Rumble, then that is always a possibility. The Nationwide Arena has posted the Fastlane commercial. Um, it's generic. It's a generic ad, but the website is still advertising the fatal five-way match between AJ Styles as the champion, Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. 
That would seem to eliminate Orton, Nakamura, Owens, and Zayn as potential winners of the Royal Rumble, unless one of those names is swapped out of the Fastlane match by winning the uh, Royal Rumble uh, in that case. It's worth noting, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, there have been lots of speculation about Nakamura winning the Rumble and going on to WrestleMania to face AJ Styles for the WWE Championship, the match that everybody wants to see and the route that WWE should take if they want to make a good WrestleMania match. In our cases, it probably should be the main event. We know we're not going to get that. Let's be honest here. Um, I wouldn't doubt if Vince made it the first match of the goddamn show. So that is the case. Uh, we have a fast lane rumored leak match. Who knows? The card is always subject to change. Take it with a grain of salt. It's not exactly set in stone. But it looks like they're going that way. A fatal five-way match for the championship at Fastlane. And it looks like Nakamura could be swapped out. I'd say probably with someone like Rusev, who definitely deserves to be in that spotlight. But definitely if the Rusev Day thing is taken off and they're going to ride that wave, that would be a suitable replacement, I think, for Nakamura in that fatal five-way match. Um, so, yeah, are Nakamura and Orange Shane's goons? Now, I really hope not. That'd be terrible. Um... So yeah, that's that. Let's move into some more news. And I think this is the last article. Up. This is the last article for today, ladies and gentlemen. Rumor killer on the false story claiming that Finn Balor was supposed to be uh, the replacement for Seth Rollins for the Raw Tag Team titles. Uh, over the last couple of days, there have been stories uh, being reported in some places claiming that Dave Meltzer said that Finn Balor was considered to be Seth Rollins' tag team partner on Monday Night Raw. The claim is that uh, Jason Jordan was chosen at the very last minute and that plans to turn Jordan heel are now on hold. Actually, none of the reported or none of that was reported in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter. Dave Meltzer did mention Balor as someone that could have been a replacement, since he is not figured into any prominent storylines right now. But he never said that WWE had considered him as Rollins's partner. Uh, Meltzer shot down the false reports on Twitter. Then someone asked him if it was true that Balor was supposed to win the tag team titles with Rollins on, on Monday. And he says, no, that was never the case. So, you know, Finn Balor. I'm sorry, Tiffany. Finn Balor. So, if you guys heard some rumors or reports that it was supposed to be Finn Balor and Jason Jordan, you're salty about it. Just get that out of your head. It wasn't ever supposed to happen. Although, it would probably make a little bit more sense because Finn Balor is not doing jack shit right now. Maybe they have something with, I think, you know what, they should do something with the club and Finn Balor at this, at this point, because what else are you going to do with him right now? He's really just doing absolutely nothing week after week, and there's no, again, like there's no prominent storyline for him in the future. Maybe they get the club back together and they feud against someone, I don't know who, but we get Finn Balor in the club finally joining forces, and we get the Balor Club or the club, you know, something like that. They need to do something with Finn Balor, man, because I really feel bad for him. Um... I would love for him just to win the Rumble and replace Reigns on again to face Brock Lesnar. That would be a dream come true, even though I wouldn't want to see Balor and, and Lesnar go at it. But it'd just be better than Reigns and Lesnar. At least I would sit there at WrestleMania and watch it instead of walking out of the building. Um, but yeah, if you heard those rumors, guys, it's not true. But we're going to have to deal with Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins uh, cringily being our tag team champions going forward for a bit. Ah, God. <clears throat> voice is a little terrible today it is actually god awful but uh that is it guys that's all the news i have for today so thank you for tuning in today um you guys remember this wednesday on uh on our lowdown show is a special edition is their 2018 nxt preview you don't want to miss that we have a lot of stuff planned for that show uh i plan to do the 2k18 tournament stream starting up soon again guys remember my idea of uh, two different streams one is a 20 one is a simulation of gimmick pay-per-view so this is a gimmick pay-per-view this month so it's the royal rumble i will do a full simulation i'll add all the superstars that i think will be in the royal rumble this year or maybe i'll wait till closer to that date and do a simulation and i'll also do a tournament stream like i've been doing with random superstars but it'll be at a random wrestle or royal rumble of event so i will do a simulator and i'll do a video for that um so stay tuned for that that'll be coming up in the next couple of weeks uh other than that guys i think that is gonna be i think that's gonna wrap it up yeah i have no other news here oh one more thing i am sorry glorious greg you are i gotta say sorry to our our, tw our twitter fan here he actually sent in a question for me to read on the show today i really do apologize i didn't read it i'll read it out right now before i leave um let me just open it up here for you. There it is. Okay, so Glorious Reich asked, Now that Matt Hardy is woken, will Jeff be a Brother Nero when he returns, or will they feud leading to Jeff turning on into Brother Nero in the end, forming the Woken Brilliance? 
Um, Glorious Grey, you know what I think is going to happen? My, my idea of what I want to see happen is Jeff come back, still want to do the whole brother, like the, the Hardy Boys gimmick, but Matt's already woken, and then he, but Bre- or Jeff Hardy's just going like, what are you doing, man? And they kind of sort of feud with each other. Um, and that leads into a WrestleMania one-on-one match, and that would lead to Jeff Hardy finally being broken and getting in or woken, and then being a woken, uh, getting into the woken brilliance. But if he just comes back as brother Nero, I have no problem with that either. And they just do some tag team stuff, and they have Senior Benjamin, Rabbi Hardy, Vanguard One, King Maxwell, all the whole gang there. I just, I would love that. I don't care. <laughs> Maybe he comes back woken. Maybe that's because of his injury. He. They do this like whole promo video of, of Matt Hardy like helping him recuperate through the injury and becoming woken, you know. So maybe they do something like that. I'm all for anything they have, just as long as it's not cringe. So I'm all for that. We'll see what happens, Glorious Greg. But uh, other than that, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for WWE Headlines episode six right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast. It talks about the WWE and NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at NoHoldsBardWP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co-host at Corbett Cappy on Twitter as well. We are also available to listen, or sorry, follow on Instagram at NoHoldsBardWP. You can also listen to us on the go. Spreaker, fantastic podcast app available for all Android and Apple devices. Go download it, guys. You can chat with us live on the air. We are also available to listen on the go on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. If you want to see the video version of this podcast and more uh, unboxings and 2K content, youtube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find this video and more. Hit the subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters as always. Happy New Year, guys. Have a safe and happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2018.